What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. Last year, DJ Khaled felt like he was kind of on his last reigns. There wasn't anything left for him really to do. It felt like I Changed A Lot kind of came and went. It did produce a platinum single, but the overall body of work was very disappointing. It felt like Khaled was running out of options of people to work with. You know, he wasn't having the, the biggest rappers in the game. Instead, he had Future on four to five songs, Rick Ross on several, yeah, Yo Gotti and Trick Daddy. So the album itself is very disappointing. But between then and his ninth album, Major Key, something big happened. Khaled was able to utilize Snapchat to boost his popularity to unseen heights, basically giving him another chance. He was able to secure an Apple Music deal, which includes his own radio show. He signed to Rock Nation. He got Jay-Z on I Got The Keys. Major Key, to me, sounds very inspired again. Just looking at the track list, you can tell that this is Khaled's biggest album. You don't have the biggest artist in the entire industry all on one album. Nobody does that except Khaled. Khaled is the only person that can get Jay-Z, Drake, Nas, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Big Sean, Gucci, 2 Chainz, Future, and the list goes on. All of the biggest rappers that you look at now, for the most part. I mean, there's obviously some missing. We know you don't see like an Eminem on here. And make no mistake, Eminem is still a huge artist. But when I started listening to Major Key, I noticed something. And maybe this is something that I should have noticed earlier on in DJ Khaled's career is that his posse cuts are probably the weakest link on Major Key. Now when you look at DJ Khaled's posse cuts in his discography, you gotta talk about We Taking Over, I'm So Hood. You know, there's been some huge hits out of that. But when you look at a lot of his album track list, a lot of the songs that stood out that still sound good today are restricted to maybe one to three artists at the most. And that's something that I think Khaled either knowingly or unknowingly understood. And that's why uh, Major Key is not built around that. Like the first four or five records is, you know, Jay-Z and Future on I Got The Keys. Then Drake on For Free. Nas. Uh, J. Cole. And then you have uh, Big Sean and Kendrick Lamar and, and Betty Wright. So he's understanding that he has to adapt. And so that's why I say, like, the, the posse cuts are the weakest links out of here because, like, uh, Do You Mind, it's, it's a good record. Anything that has a Chris Brown hook is probably going to be good because you're getting Chris Brown on the hook. And then you got Nicki Minaj uh, doing her usual thing. Nothing, like, incredible, but nothing uh, bad to say about it. And then you have August Alcina, you got Jeremiah, you got Future and Rick Ross. And by the time you hit Future and Rick Ross, it's like... Why are these guys on here? That's really how I feel. It's like they don't really add anything. I would have been happy if the record was just Chris Brown and Nicki Minaj. Um, it's crazy to me because I was thinking about August Alsina and how he's been on two Khaled albums now. He's on DJ Drama's new album. And I'm just wondering, like, every feature that I hear from him, nothing really sticks out. He doesn't leave a, a lasting impression. So I'm wondering why he's always on these records, but, you know, maybe it's just not my taste. Again, I appreciate August as an own artist, like his, his first, his debut album, Testimony, was really good. I love that album, but as a feature artist, he doesn't really bring anything to the table. Um, the other posse cut that I wanted to talk about, and I gotta applaud DJ Khaled because he continues to do the same combinations over and over and over again. Like somebody needs to give him a cake for his dedication because he has the millionth Rick Ross Future Yo Gotti collaboration on the album uh, with Fuck Up The Club. And to try to make it feel new, he goes and enlists YG. And unfortunately, YG just sounds out of place on the record. He doesn't get like the the proper introduction to a Cal album that he deserves, and it sucks because he just came off such a good run with Still Brazy. If he was given uh, a better record, something I don't know, I don't know any other records on this album, but if he was given like the opportunity to really showcase himself, he could have done some good things. But unfortunately, he's paired off with. Uh, a trio of artists that we've seen interchangeably collaborate on DJ Khaled's albums for years now. So 
that record itself I wasn't too big on. And then going back to how like the best songs on the album are like one to three people, you got uh, Nas' album done which is like the the biggest self-advertisement that you can have you listen to the record you hear the hook and i don't know i feel like at some point that the song would have been called major key because Nas is talking about you know various major keys he talks about uh starting the label signing himself that's a major key and Nas sounds as good as he's ever sounded like, I think Nas is just getting better and better with time. I mean, there probably was that, that little fumble in between probably like 2008, you know, earlier, around that time. But since Life is Good, Nas has been on a really strong run. Whenever he pops up on a guest feature, I have to listen to it. And so it was good to see him take time out of finishing up the album to do something for Khaled because the two have a, a really good chemistry as well. Um, Nas, I'm on... And then Hip Hop with Nas and Scarface. Those are two other DJ Khaled records that are great. Like Nas has probably one of the best um, runs with Khaled. When you look at like, you know, the three songs he has. Like all of them are flawless in my opinion. So I like that. And it was, it was also dope for him to kind of address the whole Pablo situation. Um, him not going at Kanye. I don't view it as going at Kanye. But you look at like Pablo Escobar and how... Uh, how much he's he's blown up like you got the Netflix series you got the life of Pablo of course and you got uh, the movies and you know everybody's talking about that so I like that Nas kind of addressed that talk about how Pablo's you know everywhere how he was the original Escobar and the record itself was probably one of the top three on the album another record that I really enjoyed was J. Cole's Jermaine's interlude now, I'm happy for this record because it features Earth Gang. They're Atlanta, an Atlanta duo, and they're all around dope. So I've seen them be in the studio with J. Cole, but we haven't heard anything from that until now. So they they um, they show up, kind of do like a bridge, a hook thing. And then J. Cole really kind of dives into like his depression, talks about, um, you know, why he's been gone and, you know, how he's been playing with thoughts of retirement. I think that's the one thing that everybody's going to take away from this record is that he's been thinking about retirement. Um, I know he's probably working on another album, so I don't think retirement's coming any soon. But when you reach a point like where he's at, he's at the top of his game right now, those thoughts are going to happen because, you know, you've accomplished everything. What more is there to say? Then another record on the album that surprised me was Bryson Tiller and Future. I'm going to be all right. I like when Khaled does collaborations that we want to see otherwise. I don't think Bryson Tiller is in any rush to work with Future and vice versa. The two kind of uh, just work with each with themselves, really. Like Future doesn't do a whole lot of guest features, um, at least on his uh, like the last five mixtapes albums that he's put out has been mostly him. So I like that Khaled brought them together and I wasn't sure what to expect, but they did sound good together. Then Khaled turns his Don't Ever Play Yourself catchphrase into a song. And he features uh, Jadakiss, who says, I need my name in the cocaine almanac. I like that line. Um, you got Fat Joe. You got uh, Fabulous. And then you got Busta Rhymes. And then you have the, the standout person to me is Kent Jones. Now, I've listened to Kent Jones as far as Don't Mind, his huge uh, Billboard number one hit single. But when I heard him rapping, I was like, wow, he's keeping up with legends, if not outspitting them. So that was a major moment to me. And I think DJ Khaled's albums are at best when he's creating moments like that. Moments to talk about. Uh, collaborations that we've never seen. And just cool concepts that really push artists. Um, I think one of my major issues with I Changed A Lot was nobody felt too inspired to like go the extra mile. But here you have all these people that are, are rapping their asses off. You know, Nas is at the top of his game. J. Cole does something besides... He does something different. I like that J. Cole, um, you know, he produces a feeling for his interlude. That's what I can say about that. And then, you know, you got Jay-Z. Jay-Z rapping pretty good. Um, so you got all these different big artists. Uh, big Sean and Kendrick trying to outspit each other on one record with Holy Key. So 
you got all these different uh, artists that sound inspired and they sound like they want to be on a DJ Khaled album. And then there's a couple records that really don't like, they don't offer anything. Like I said, when you have records like the Nas and J. Cole, Jay-Z, uh, Big Sean and Kendrick, etc., etc., then it's like the second half of the album kind of falls short. In my opinion, you have Taurus featuring Travis Scott and Lil Wayne and coming off of Wayne's uh, DJ drama, Quality Street Music 2 intro, I was expecting more. Um, that record was disappointing. And then Forgive Me Father. Now, I like Megan Trainor on that. I was surprised because I wasn't expecting to like anything about that record. It's just such a weird combination. Megan Trainor, Wiz Khalifa, and Wale. But it, I like the hook. And that's really all I can say about the record. Um, work for it. I like the idea of it because you got Gucci who's never been on a DJ Khaled album. But I would have liked to see him do something with Gucci differently. He's on a Metro Boomin' beat. Gucci can get on a Metro Boomin' beat whenever. Do something that Gucci is not going to do on his own. That's what I want to see out of a Khaled album. Um, luckily, the album kind of ends on a strong note with Movado's progress. Um, you know, that has a potential to be a, a really uh, big record if it's pushed. But I like that Movado is, is actually still getting that coverage on DJ Khaled album. And, and only in closing it, too, that's a huge, um, that's huge for him. So, Major Key, like, I, I feel like I can just keep talking about Major Key. There's a lot to talk about, and that's a good thing. Um, Khaled really took all the, I hope he took all the criticism from I Changed a lot and really stepped up his game with Major Key. I hope this is not the, the last album from Khaled that we get that's um, of this caliber. I want to see him continue to do uh, collaborations we've never seen. I want him to create more moments for hip-hop. So Major Key was, for the most part, an enjoyable listen. All these different artists trying to outdo each other, even if they didn't know that they're all going to be on the same album, is cool because then it creates favorites. It creates, uh, you know, memorable lines and all of that. So Major Key is um, an album that you definitely should check out. And once you listen to it, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace.